Welcome back, friends. I hope you had a great weekend and that you did some relaxing and a lot of playing. We had some beautiful weather. I know that uh, my husband and I enjoyed the sunshine. I was just so thankful that God has created all his wonderful nature for us. Our worship this whole week is going to be the story of Easter. Now, we all know Easter Sunday is a wonderful day. There was a whole bunch of parts to the story. So today, for our worship and Bible time, we're going to talk about two parts of the story. The first part we're going to talk about is called Palm Friday. Okay? So I'm going to read it to you, and then I'm going to show you the pictures, okay? Something terrible but wonderful was about to happen. In a few days, God's big plan would be revealed. Jesus knew what was coming, and God knew, but no one else knew. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus sent two disciples ahead to find a donkey for him to ride into the city. Jesus climbed onto its back and clippity clop, he rode through the city gate. Jerusalem was filled with families preparing for Passover, the year's biggest holiday. Look, it's Jesus, someone shouted. They all ran to see him. Some laid their coats on the dirty road for the donkey to walk on. Others covered the street with palm branches or waved them in the air. Hosanna, hooray, the son of David is here, they yelled. Blessed is Jesus, who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus rode into the city like a king, and Jerusalem's religious leaders did not like that one bit. Why are the people saying, he comes in the name of the Lord? They grumbled. There's no way he can be the son of God. They were so angry that they made a plan to kill Jesus. And there's the picture you can see Jesus is riding on the donkey and people are putting palm leaves and coats down. All right. So the next part of the story is called the Last Supper. Jesus and his disciples gathered in an upstairs room to eat their Passover supper. During the meal, Jesus washed his disciples' feet. In those days, People's feet got very dirty walking because they wore sandals. Who would want to wash someone's feet? Now, I think that we talked about this um, when we talked about Elisha and the different ways that people used to get around. Because remember, they didn't have cars or trucks. And they didn't have shoes like we would wear. So they would walk different places with sandals and because they didn't have roads like we have the dirt would make their feet extremely extremely dirty so jesus was showing his love to the disciples by washing their feet all right let's keep reading servants were the ones who had to wash people's feet back then but jesus served his disciples by doing this dirty job at first, Peter didn't want Jesus to wash his feet. Lord, Peter said, you are too good to wash my feet like a servant. Ah, but if you don't let me wash away the dirt, Jesus answered, you won't belong to me. Jesus wasn't really talking about dirty feet, but about sin, the dirt in our heart. When our hearts are full of things God hates, can't be close to him. It's impossible for people to wash away sin by themselves. And God knew that. So he planned for Jesus to wash our sins away, not by washing our feet, but by washing our hearts. After Jesus washed his disciples' feet, he said to them, I did this to show you that as future servants and teachers, you are to be humble and do anything God asks. God asks out of love for me. So there's a little more to the story, but I want to show you the pictures. So there are the disciples, and they're in the uh, room, getting ready to have their 
Supper. And then there's Jesus, and he's preparing to wash the feet. Jesus knew that this was going to be his last supper with his friends. Soon, I will leave you, he said. He picked some bread up, broke it into tiny pieces, and passed it around for them to eat. My body will be broken like this bread. He passed around a cup and told them to drink. My blood will wash away your sins, and your hearts will be clean forever. When you eat and drink, Remember me, I came to save God's people. One of you will have me arrested, Jesus said. The disciples couldn't believe what they were hearing. Who would do this, they asked. The one to whom I will give this bread, Jesus said as he handed the bread to Judas. Go, do what you must. Then Jesus said to the rest of his helpers, I won't be with you much longer. You will be sad, but don't be afraid. I will come back. Peter cried out, I won't leave you. You, you, I will be arrested and I will die with you. Peter, Jesus said gently, before the rooster crows tomorrow, you will say me. You don't know me three different times. And here's Jesus. He's breaking the bread and giving the disciples the juice. Peter was one of Jesus' best friends, and he said that he wouldn't leave him. But we're going to find in our story tomorrow what happens next. But I want you to remember that even though there are some sad parts to this story, it ends with one of the most amazing things to ever have happened. Let's bow our heads. Dear Jesus, thank you for another day. Thank you for giving your son and for having him help us in everything we do. Please be with us throughout this whole week as we learn more about the Easter story and more about you. We love you, Jesus. Amen. All right, my friends, I'll see you back. I have some fun read-alouds for this week. So I'll see you back in a little bit.